Hey everybody, welcome back to Play the Game HQ. I'm Daniel and this is Sandart. It's from 25th Century Games. And as a huge fan of the roll and write, flip and write, move and write genre of games, this game drew me in unlike another game in that type of game that I can think of in a long while. As soon as I saw it, I get the, the simplicity, but the beauty of the front cover of the box is incredible. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, I let's get this to the table now. I really want to play that game. Now, full disclosure, I've only played this game once. So this is a first impressions, but a lot of the, um, we had a great time with it. We did have some questions. There are a couple things that seemed a little unbalanced in the scoring and everyone had that same feeling. We weren't doing anything wrong. Um, like we double checked to make sure that that was, that we weren't feeling that because we scored something wrong. There were just a few things and it is still a prototype. It's a really nice prototype, but it's not in full production yet. So there are, um, there is going to be a chance for them to go back and adjust some things if they decide that the, if the designer decides that they feel the same way about it. But overall, we had a really good time with it and I love the concept of the game. So it is a move and write game where you are trying to fill your bottle of sand with different colors. This is my page from the game that we played. It's my actual sheet that I used. It is Kevin's House of Sand. Uh, our slogan is it gets everywhere. The flow of the game is that on your turn, you're going to be moving your little hand icon up and down this line of actions. And where, wherever you land, you're going to take that action. And then you're going to flip your hand the other way and you have to move the direction that the thumb is pointing. So if I come this way and land on this, I can gain five blue sand in my supply here. And because I moved this direction, I have to flip that hand. And the next time I have to move in that direction. So you're gonna be gaining sand into your supply here in different colors. So you have your primary colors and then your secondary colors. And the secondary colors are harder to get and they can be made by mixing colors or by coming to one of these spaces that gives you the secondary color. But like I can get five red sand here. There's nowhere that I can directly get five orange or green or purple sand. So. Those, uh, those secondary colors are harder to come by, but they're also typically more valuable in the objective cards. So as you move and take abilities, you have those abilities that give you sand, and then you have those abilities that let you pour sand. And when you pour sand, each of these dots represents how many units of sand from your supply it requires. So for this triangle here, it costs one purple sand to pour. And then these, uh, if you can see them on the camera, there's some spaces that don't have any dots in them. As long as you're pouring an adjacent space, you can pour into those two and it doesn't cost you any sand from your supply, but you have to be filling an adjacent space that does require sand. So uh, you, as you pour sand, you can pour as much of one color as you want, as long as you have it. You can't pour sand that defies gravity. So I couldn't take something and pour into this area unless I have the areas below it filled up. And as you pour, you're gonna gain abilities. You have these abilities on the right side and these points on the left side. There's a cool kind of decision-making process. As you complete and fill above the line at each of these spots, you have to decide whether you wanna take the ability or take the points. And this one here is very valuable in points. And you can see I scored 50 points total. Um, let's see if everyone else recorded their score. Uh, Jared looks like Jared scored 48, Allison scored 52. So when you have to decide whether you want the points or the ability, this ability is to take two turns in a row um, or to take two actions on your turn, or you can get eight points, which was almost 20% of my final score. So eight points is a lot. So that's a, that's a big decision to make uh, if you wanna have an extra turn or if you want to take the eight points. The abilities you can get is that you can move from the bottom to the top. So if I was right here on my turn, I can move up to that one. I still have to flip it and flip point the thumb the other way. Uh, and then, but I do get to move directly from the bottom to the top without having to go down and come back to that card. Uh, this one gives you an extra sand every time you collect sand. Like I said, this one gives you an extra turn. This one, and you have to have the hand ability in order to take this ability. This one lets you move twice in the same direction before you turn back. And this one, again, gives you an additional one sand when you collect sand. So the whole flow of the game is, again, you're going to move your hand. You're going to take the action on the card, which is going to be to either collect sand or pour sand. And you're trying to complete different objectives. You're trying to complete mainly different patterns. So these are the patterns that you can complete. You get to score every time you complete that pattern. And the patterns are communal. Everyone can score the same pattern. It's not a first to get those. Uh, the first finished card, obviously, is whoever finishes their bottle first is going to take that card. 
and typically the most of a color card only one person is going to take those unless there's a tie then they both get the points but the patterns in as many people as they want can complete those patterns um and you get points for every time you complete them. The other way you can score points is with these cards over here. I don't have any that complete any of these cards, but when you come down here to the layer side, if, if you came down and went there on your move, you could take one of the cards. And the way this works is if you line it up and you make that uh, that design, you get the points on the card. Obviously the two and three point cards are, are mostly or possibly all primary colors and then the five point cards mix in some secondary colors because those are harder to get. You can score it on either side, but you can't score the same card twice. So each of those cards is only going to score once at the most. So all in all, really enjoyed the game. It was a it was a nice strategy to try and race to getting those patterns done and try and maximize the sand that you're pouring and and really figure out the best way to do that. Now, there were a couple of critiques that we had kind of universally. The scoring objectives felt a little unbalanced. Uh, for instance, because you can pour as much sand as you want, if you have enough sand to pour, once you got enough green, you could pour the green stripe in one pour and that's 17 points. And that compared to the rainbow, which is 15 points, the, the sand stripe can be poured in a single pour. The rainbow, each color is gonna require a separate pour. So the, the rainbow is going to cost one, two, three, four, five, six. That has all six colors in it. This has to be done over six turns and it's really one pour at a time because you can't like you have to work with gravity. So I did make the rainbow over here, but you have to pour each of those colors individually on separate turns. So it just felt like the fact that that's 15 points and that's 17 points felt a little unbalanced. Um, we also had like the Falcon is eight points. Now this is a primary color, so it's easier to get the red. Uh, this requires one, two, three, four, five. So I could get all of the red that I need for this one in one turn. But on this one, like I have to pour this part and then I have to fill in this color and then I have to pour this part and fill in this color and then pour this part. That at, at best is gonna take uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns to pour and it's only eight points. So there was a little bit, you know, I felt like that part of it was unbalanced. The one thing that really got to Allison in the game is her, she is a completionist. And you will notice that my bottle isn't finished because Peyton rushed to finish his bottle. Now Peyton lost, he had the lowest score out of everyone because he was focused on finishing his bottle, thinking that that would give him more points. He'd get the first finished. He poured a bunch of blue, so he got that but he wasn't focusing on the patterns in those high scoring objectives. Um, and the fact that I think this is, this is Allison's bottle. She was really tediously trying to get those objectives and not paying attention to what Peyton was doing, which was on her, but she also had a very unfinished bottle and was, um, was pretty bummed about that. She did end up winning uh, because she took that eight points. She noticed that Peyton was about to finish. So instead of taking the, the take two extra turns, she took the eight points, which worked out for her. So she won, but she had the uh, the least valuable or the, the least complete bottle. So again, it's strategically, you, you need to figure out how to maximize your points and rushing to fill your bottle first may not be the best way to do that. However, looking at what other players are doing and noticing that, oh, Allison's about to complete her rainbow, uh, maybe has two more turns for it. And I have a bunch of blue sand. I'm just gonna fill mine up so that I can end the game early. You do have that option and that may be strategically beneficial for you at some point, but it was, we did all kind of feel that little pull of, oh, my, my sand bottle isn't very full. Now hers was way less full than mine, but it was that pull of like, I, I want it to be finished and it's not, and it didn't feel right to go and finish it after the game was complete. Now the end of the game ends, if you, as you've probably picked up, as soon as someone finishes their bottle, fills it all the way up, it goes around so that everyone gets an equal number of turns and then you score and scoring is pretty simple. You're gonna score any patterns that you completed. Whoever finished first is gonna score that five point card. Uh, whoever had the most of the color and there are, these are randomized, like there's, there's cards for each color. It's not just always blue and green, but whoever had the most of the colors that are shown are gonna get the points. And then you're going to score any of the layer cards that you took during the game and you're going to add up your points and whoever has the highest score wins. So 
functionally and mechanically, it's a really simple game. It's a very family friendly game. Again, you're gonna move, you're gonna collect sand. Again, your primary colors you get pretty directly, your secondary colors you can get directly but in lower quantities, or you can mix sand up to get that other sand. The secondary colors are very expensive. They're very difficult to get. So those, those secondary color objectives are gonna be um, more valuable than the primary colors. And, but I, I just, again, it felt a little unbalanced. It didn't ruin the game for me. I still really enjoyed the game and I love the concept of the game. Now this is a prototype, but typically with prototypes this nice, these are factory copies uh, and it is mostly what's gonna be used in the game. And I will say if, they, uh, if the final version comes with the same colored pencils, you may wanna get a nice set of colored pencils to go with the game. These were uh, a little dull. It was hard to get uh, vibrant colors. I don't really know how it's gonna show up on camera as I'm shooting this, but I would probably the next time I play get some nice Crayola colored pencils or something. Something that gives, has a little more um, vibrance to it, especially in yellows, like the lighter colors tend to, to blend in with the paper, especially yellow. And the green is a little, it's not as vibrant as I would like, but all in all, definitely not a deal breaker for the game. I think for the game and what it is, it's a really good value on the Kickstarter. It's only $20. The MSRP is going to be $30, which again, for a, you know, assuming that this is what's going to come with it, it has a huge stack of pages. They are single sided, but that's, if it comes with this many pages in the game, that's, that's going to take a while to get through that. And that's the Obviously the risk with roll and writes in this kind of game is it's it's disposable, you are, or it's consumable, you are using up the pages, but at least the prototype has a lot in there, um, more than you're likely to go through in a reasonable amount of time. Um, yeah, the $20 on the Kickstarter, you can buy all four of these games for $65. As far as value for the amount of game you get, it's one of the best valued Kickstarters that I've seen. You get four games, all four of these games are on the Kickstarter as a bundle that you can get for $65. That's about half of the MSRP. Uh, it's a great value. They're all four different games. They have different themes. They're roughly the same weight. Uh, they're great family weight games and really enjoyable even as a heavier gamer if you're playing with a group of people. They're all gonna be great games that require strategy, they require thought, but they're easy to teach and easy to pick up. So we'll leave a link to the Kickstarter below. Again, this isn't a sponsored video. We're just, we really enjoyed our experience with these games. And again, even this one with the, the drawbacks, with the things that stuck out to us, the unbalanced card and the, the uh, completionist complex that Allison has, it, we still really enjoyed the game and loved the concept of it. And it's beautiful. It's a really well illustrated, really well thought out game. So we'll leave a link to the Kickstarter below so you can check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave us a comment. We'll be sure to answer those as quick as we can. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.